There goes nothing. Oh man. Ah, no turning back now. <laughs> oh boy. Today is exciting and scary. It's finally time to put the finishes on this butcher block top. I can't believe that this thing started out as firewood. If you haven't seen that video, jump back a couple, I think, and take a look at that. We actually scavenged all this wood out of the firewood pile. And look at it now. It's starting to take shape. So we got everything cut to length, cut to shape. And this is going to be a little bit tedious uh, because the sink that we have to put in this countertop for this kitchenette project that we're working on is snug. Very snug. <laughs> Let me emphasize that. So getting this thing cut correctly is going to be super critical to the top fitting ultimately on the cabinets. So we picked out a stainless steel sink. Actually, we had two of them and they had different features and different benefits. We chose to go with the bigger sink because some of the features on the other one we decided we could make. We actually built the features that were included on the other sink because we had leftover materials from this project. One of the attractive bells and whistles of that sink was a cutting board that actually nested inside the sink so that you could A, increase your counter space or usable counter space, and B, you could do your cutting over the sink, uh, making it more convenient to rinse and cut, etc. Well, guess what? We made our own. <laughs> it's almost there. Uh, this one's still a bit rough. Um, we need to run this to the planer do some cutting, and then we actually got our router table, table set up, so we should be able to uh, do some kind of fancy stuff on this guy. So this will end up nesting inside the sink, which is super cool. And then we're gonna build the drying rack. We haven't done that yet because we need some, some of the materials that we just cut off of this to build it, but it will also nest in the sink. And because this kitchenette ultimately has a fairly small countertop, these little features, if we actually end up using them, will increase the amount of usable counter space. So my goal today is pretty simple. Get this top covered in epoxy, but we've got to do a bit of work to get there. We've got to get the sink hole cut. Obviously we needed to get it cut to dimensions too. And then we've got to do some sanding and some other detail prep on this thing so that it's ready to smother in epoxy. If you've been following this cabinet build, you know that finishes are a sore subject. A quick teaser update. We decided to hire someone else to do the finishes on the face frames, 
the doors and the drawer fronts. So those are out getting done right now. When they come back, you'll see. It is beautiful. And that's something I think we learned we'd rather just pay someone else to do. So what about the butcher block top? What do we do there? Well, uh, we could oil it and it would have a very natural look, but oiling is a constant process and requires a tremendous amount of maintenance and it doesn't really protect the wood. Being fur, this is fairly soft, so it's subject to dings and dents and cuts and things. So we did a test here. We just took some of the scrap material and built kind of a, a sample cutting top thingamajigger here, and we coated it in epoxy resin. And then once it was done, we actually sanded it down uh, first we used 4 out steel wool and then we used an 800 grit sandpaper to basically knock it down to a matte finish. And then we hit that with a carnauba wax and we really like this finish. It's kind of dull, but at the same time it makes the, the wood colors pop. We don't feel like it's overstated, but we also don't feel like it'll be a chore to maintain. It's kind of muted, so you can kind of get away with sin a little bit in the maintenance. In talking with a cabinet uh, company, we discussed this topic of the butcher block top, and he was only aware of one company who offers a matte finish on their butcher block tops. They don't offer the finish, you have to buy the whole top from them and it comes finished. So they don't tell you how they do it. Uh, we didn't do a lot of research on that, I'll admit that right now. Um, we've been kind of trying to move this project along, which really sucks because it feels like maybe we should have stopped and taken some time and I don't know, gone to the showrooms and, and Googled around for a whole long time. But I think we're more excited to have the cabinet project done, so maybe we're kind of causing more problems for ourselves. The good news is we found this epoxy, it works, it's easy to apply, we can knock the finish down from a really high luster or sheen to a matte finish, and the epoxy is super durable and heat resistant. It's tight, but it'll work. It's a little tall. Yeah. We'll have to lower it a little bit. It looks so good. It's so sharp. Yeah. Like it fits perfectly. You don't put too much downward pressure on that. It's not okay. much support don't in the do sink. Don't pull-ups on yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It, needs, it needs a couple of cabinets underneath of it to support it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in my uh, lamination skills, so. Are you happy? I'm ecstatic, but I don't know if it fits in the cabinet yet. Right. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Well, though. assuming it does, yeah. I love the contrast of the wood and the metal. I do too. Such a preview. I think this is something that I feel like we'll, we might include in our home. Yep, we're talking about trying to contrast stainless with the fur to create kind of like a warmth and cold. I don't know, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I think, don't quote me, but I think in feng shui you're supposed to have all the elements. Okay. And I, I want to say this counts maybe as water. Yeah. And then this is like wood. Ah, okay. You got your yep. fire and your greenery, but this looks, <laughs> this looks good. I'll read that book again, okay? I, I spent a while. <laughs> what do you think? It's a big sink. Yeah. A little I, bit of counter space. I'm really excited to use this. I think the stainless steel is nice. It's an yep. upgrade from our white plastic. Oh, right? <laughs> I think once that's epoxied and the color on the wood really pops, I think it's gonna look even better. I think the problem we might have is that what if your temporary is so good that you don't want to go to your permanent? That's real. But we, we, we did talk yep. about this being a possibility. Yep, 
Well, we want to do what's nice because unfortunately with the permanent, temporary permanent thing, this may be this way for years before we get around to putting the one piece top on. And if we never do, we well, might, there you go. We might always have bigger fish to fry in our lives than going back and getting a one piece stainless steel countertop for a garage kitchen. Yeah, maybe we'll just put all that effort into the kitchen. I don't know. I would be lying if I said that wasn't freaking scary. <laughs> um, we have so much time invested in this top. Every flipping one of those boards and all that. So cutting that hole is scary. Like I mentioned, this sink fits really tight. Uh, so I think it's time to kind of test the top and see if it actually fits in the cabinets because it's a little early, I think, to completely celebrate. So it goes flush with the rear here. Well, this was my fear. So you can see this line here is actually how much we'll have to cut away this block, this top block, in order for that sink to slide down in there. And it doesn't work. I mean, basically cutting off all of our screws and you can see this line over here is pretty much tight to that side. And this one's, you know, it's got about the quarter inch that we expected over there. So I think what we're gonna do is remove this block that way we've got some meat up here. We only have an inch and a quarter where the face frame covers this up here. Um, but that inch and a quarter is better than nothing. And, and we can just ditch this block and it'll give us something and then we can pocket hole from the back. And that way this can actually mount to the top. I mean, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know what normally happens here. Like I feel like this is not working. Either the sink is too big for this cabinet or I don't know. Anyway, we're just gonna kinda deal with it. So let's get this out of here so we don't cut it all up and get a, a half inch block in there. And that'll solve this problem immediately. And then we should be able just to test fit the sink. creative on how to lock it in because there's like nothing to hook it to like we took the we took this out right so now there's nothing to hook the front to That's in there pretty good. Ah, I think we're winning. I think we won or winning or won. I knew that portion of this project was going to suck. I can't overstate it. Like this sink I think was built for a 30 inch sink base and this is a 26. In hindsight, I wish we would have built a 30 inch base, but the problem is we're limited on space. And so we would have to take four inches out of this guy or four inches out of this guy. So I opted to try to squeeze everything in and I will say squeeze is the right word. The way this sink is mounted has these little clippy poo things that come underneath and grab onto the top, except for a cabinet so small, there's no room for it to grab onto the top. And I'll just say like, I got sick and tired of doing math. And I just kind of like use some of the basic math that I did and I cut a hole because there's just so many like variables and none of it straightforward. So the good news is the sink fits and we actually end up having to notch this cross piece. I mean, it's basically down to nothing. It's down to a three quarter inch piece of plywood, but it's doing something and it gives us something to hook onto. So we're going to have two mounts in the front and two mounts in the rear for the sink and that should keep it from wiggling without, you know, people being really ridiculous. This part is done and it definitely finally fits. If I would have done this perfectly, I would have left a little bit more lip 
on the top here and a little bit more lip on the side. And, uh, and in a super ideal case, there would have been another inch and a half of cabinet on each side, and it would have been no problem at all to mount this stinking sink. But you can see how tight this is. We have no room between this and the front cross member. We've got just a sneeze in the back here. And again, nothing hardly on either side. That's how tight it is. I've been working on prep for about a half an hour and we're getting really, really close to ready for epoxy. Um, I did spend a little bit of time doing some wood fill. Obviously we ran the router over the edges to put a nice bevel on them and did quite a bit of belt sanding. Um, we've sanded both sides because they were a little rough from the lamination glue up or whatever. Um, the underside, we didn't make it perfect. We just got it kind of good enough and the top, um, nice and flat, worked, kind of touch it with my hand, try to find any high spots or low spots and get those out of here. A lot of what's happened today I did off camera because it's just, it's, on, it's tedious on a level that I wouldn't expect anybody to care about. I think getting this done right the first time is so important that it's, it's worth whatever time it takes. I set a goal for myself today to get this epoxied. We're gonna get it done. But it, it seemed a little fuzzy there for a while and my head kind of gets turned around a little bit and, and it's, it's just super critical that we get this right. So we put the camera down and we just kind of work and then of course we just show you guys the finished product and it's like dun dun dun, it all worked out. So this is kind of our goal. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but this is basically what we're after. This is a two part epoxy product that we purchased at Home Depot and um, I think it is uh, heat resistant up to like 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So you could conceivably set a warm pot on here, but not a hot pot. And it is waterproof. Uh, shouldn't have any issues with water. So this is kind of an, an idea. This was super glossy, like mirror glossy. And then we tested a couple of things and we tried to knock the gloss down. Uh, we wanted a more muted or matted finish so that's kind of what we're looking for this time. I'm not sure how many coats we're actually gonna to have to do, but one of the other challenges we're up against is this stuff takes days to cure before you really can even touch it, let alone use it. I'm hoping to hear from the company that has our doors, drawers, and frames this week, but I'm not really sure if that's gonna happen. But I really want it to happen because we wanna get this project wrapped up in the next maybe five or six days or so, even though we've got a bunch more prep to do. So if we only have three or four days for this stuff to cure and we're wanting to put it all together, we're starting to run into bottlenecks, especially if we have to do more than one coat. So we've done a bunch of work to get this as level as we can so that when we flow the epoxy, hopefully we don't end up with, with like a thick spot in the front or the rear or left or right. And um, there's only one way to find out, I guess. But we, we shimmed up all of our bases and worked with our four foot level and it looks like it's pretty stinking good. There goes nothing. Oh man. Ah, no turning back now. <laughs> oh boy. And so now we just move it around.
I don't know. I guess we'll find out tomorrow morning whether we nailed it. This is my first time ever using epoxy, but thankfully I've got a little bit of a mentor who has done this before. It's scary and exciting. Um, finishes are just such a weird thing. Like I think very few people give any thought to how certain things get to be the way they are. Most people I know just paint it. When in doubt, go to the paint store, oogle over paint colors and paint it, right? And hopefully this was a good decision. So far the wood is already popping. Even the end grain looks super good. So this decision, I think, I think we're gonna like it. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. We've got to put one more coat on. Uh, it sounds like this coat is primarily to kind of seal up the wood, fill in the gaps, and uh, kind of get a, a primer coat, if you will. And then the second coat really starts to smooth out and kind of has that smooth, glossy look, which of course we're gonna knock that back down to a more matte finish. I'm gonna be really honest, guys. I am not in the mood for video today. I really just wanna work on this project, partly because I don't know what I'm doing and it's really not fun to have a camera around. But at the same time, Alyssa and I both agree that at the times where we least want to have the camera around those are the videos that we most like to go back and watch because usually that means that we're struggling and we're, we're having a hard time and it's those moments where good things happen or maybe we're finishing a project for the first time and well this is one of those um, I'm glad I filmed today because you know what this is a really tough thing I think it probably looks really simple on camera and the reality is that one mistake one mistake is all it would take to completely ruin this countertop and the days of work that we put into getting it to this stage. So right now we're waiting to hear back from the uh, cabinet company and hopefully we'll talk to them tomorrow and get an update. Um, we're gonna work on some of the other prep tasks to make sure that the wall is ready and everything's kind of tuned up and ready for cabinet install. And then I think probably once the face frames come back, it's probably gonna take us at least a day to get everything assembled. Because remember, we've gotta put the doors on the face frames and then the face frames on the cabinets. And that sounds really easy, but I think it's gonna have, well, a bunch of lessons there because we've gotta get the reveals correct and we've really gotta take time to make sure that the hinges get assembled correctly so that you know when we're all done, everything looks really good. Um, so we'll be working on that hopefully in the next day or two. I guess you'll have to stay tuned because right now I'm feeling a little lost with this project, but I know we're going in the right direction. Unfortunately, we did not have time to get this cutting board finished so we'll have to just save that for another day but I'm super excited to see this cut down plain smooth oiled and right next to the sink I think it's gonna look really sharp